Well, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the committee to invite me here today to discuss some points about the microembolisms. Well, this is the index of my talk, and as you see, I want to try to find or define the microembolism, what is a microsignal, and what is a microembolism, trying to differentiate each other. Uh, we can use a, an online detection for the detection of uh, microembolism. I try to explain you how there are several cardiac embolic sources, as you know, and we all try to figure out and um, what is the main clinical relevance after the microembolization. Well, I'm a vascular neurologist. I work every day with this kind of machines, with this power Doppler machine. And this is, for me, the easiest way to define what is microembolism. As you see in the figure, it's microsignal. It's, uh, it's the way I can uh, def can define this uh, microembolism, like a higher ultrasound reflected when we try to check or to assess the flow of the middle artery, as you see in this uh, simple CT. This is a uh, transcanal Doppler monitoring. It's our protocol in our unit. In the video, you can, you can see how these uh, micro signals in this uh, spectral waveform, because we uh, just uh, administered uh, the contrast like Lebovist. It's an example to um, see how it's the micro, uh, micro signal in the the transcranial Doppler monitoring. Well, this is a simple B spectral mode. You can see the flow of the MCA artery and ACA artery, and this is a, a unique and that's a, a isolated microemboli, pretty easy to uh, diagnose, but sometimes we have this kind of a spectrum and as you see, this has several microsignal, only one uh, microemboli. It's not that easy to uh, diagnose. So we need uh, a very good um, established criteria to uh, define what is a microembolism. This is a transit signal more than 3 dBs. It's a lasting more than 300 microseconds unidirectional. And we can hear a moan in the same time we are seeing the uh, microembolism. Well, sometimes it's not easy to differentiate what is a solid microembolism or gaseous microembolism. But uh, we can use, we could use an online automatic discriminator as the multi-frequency PW mode Doppler because uh, at a higher frequency, the solid uh, microembolus it reflected, uh, reflected more ultrasound. As you see, this is a higher frequency, 2.5, and this is a, a 3 dB sound, uh, in the solid microemboli, and in the gaseous microemboli, you see a 4.5 in the uh, dB. So clearly, this is a solid uh, embolus, and this is a gaseous embolus. Well, even we could know where the, um, where the emboli come from. This is, a, this is a study when the, we can see the prevalence of the uh, micro signal, uh, micro hemolus in the different uh, cardiac, uh, cardiac source of emboli. As uh, you see, this is an infectious endocarditis, a left ventricular aneurysm, a thrombus inside the heart, dilative myocardiopathy, non valvular atrial fibrillation, and a prosthetic ball. But you see, it's, uh, it's the, the incidence of microembolus in this kind of diseases is not so low. But uh, not only in this, uh, diseases, diseases, but in uh, invasive diagnostic procedure as uh, coronary bypass, artery grafting, and geography, we can see even uh, microembolus in these procedures. 
But, um, okay, we have our solid microemboli. We know we are, um, the patient is uh, bit damaged or not. Are they really harmful or not? Well, if uh, after the procedure we, uh, we check the patient, we examine the patient and we see a facial weakness, it's obvious we are under acute stroke. So in these cases, please call your acute neurologist to diagnose the patient because it is uh, an acute stroke. But uh, if we have a solid microembolus, the examination is normal after the procedure, okay, we could perform an acute MRI. This is a DWI MRI, and this is another way to check if we have a, a, a stroke or a hyperintensive that is a micro infarct. This is another um, uh, imaging modality uh, like uh, FLIR that uh, we can use to uh, be even more accurate. Well, and uh, in this study, you can, you can see how it is in the, uh, how many uh, microembolization uh, we can find after a cardiac catheterization. You see, this is, uh, uh, again, this is uh, underwent uh, acute MRI, and the, the percentage of the uh, infarct that they found was uh, 22%, 50%, this, uh, again, it's, uh, it's not so low. And uh, in this review, the authors conclude that uh, one of the main factors that could explain this uh, uh, acute stroke after the procedures uh, was the length of the procedure. What it uh, means is the, the, the same as the chance of finding the, a thrombus inside the catheter or if the patient have uh, a, a severe aortic plague and their um, um, and, and the cardiologist involved didn't know that. Well, not only stroke could be the problem here. We could uh, have a, um, also a cognitive impairment after this uh, microembolization. You see, again, this is uh, DWI lesions, uh, ADC map. And uh, in this uh, study, um, the authors found that uh, in the group that uh, patients have uh, WI lesions after the procedure, this uh, minimal uh, examination score was lower. This is a, a good paper, but the main um, by, mm, block wrote here, it's a minimal examination. Probably it's not the best test to uh, assess these kind of uh, problems. Okay. What about after cardiac surgery? This is a, a, pretty, a pretty good paper. This is a review paper. You can see several um, randomized um, studies, and then all of them is not so clear the relationship between uh, HITS and uh, cognitive impairment. HITS in this way uh, means the micro signal that we can find in the TCD Doppler monitoring. This, this is why the number of patients in this study is quite small. It is uh, pretty hard to find any differences with this number of patients. And this uh, lack of uh, uh, battery testing, uh, neuro neuropsychological testing in, the, in this uh, review, I mean, if, uh, if uh, it's a it's, um, if uh, it's a study, uh, use uh, a different uh, battery test, it's pretty hard to find some differences in, in, this, in this case about uh, cognitive impairment. So I would like to conclude with uh, saying that subscranial Doppler is a feasible technique for monitoring uh, microembolism. The relationship between microembolism and cerebral microinfraction is well established. We need more studies to assess the association between um, microembolic signals and cognitive decline after cardiac surgery. Thank you.